it's power hour number 11 with Alice Osborne. It is a beautiful muggy day here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's great to have you. Uh, today we're doing songs from home about home. And uh, when I looked at my list of songs that I've written, uh, pretty much all of them are about home. So this will be a set that is mostly Alice songs. And uh, so you can leave now if that's not your thing. That's cool. But we're, uh, we're going to do a lot of songs that I wrote and enjoy it. And I also want to do a plug, a little uh, programming note. Uh, we'll be back next week at 11 o'clock, same, pl same, same place. And, uh, but tonight at 5.30, I will be broadcasting from my good friend Dan Friedman's chocolate shop, Special Treats at 5.30 p.m. You can stay where you are and look to us, uh, look for us at the Special Treats Facebook page where I'll be broadcasting live from Special Treats. So that's tonight at 5.30 to 6.30. And uh, I'll be mentioning that throughout the show. Well, let's get started and you can tip me um, so I can tip other musicians at uh, Alice, uh, paypal.me front slash Alice Osborne one or Venmo Alice dash Osborne dash four and the information is right there on the description. Okay, let's get started. Old derelicts and this song was inspired by a painting about a truck and it's from the Chuck's point of view. So hey Catherine, hey Tom, thanks for joining us today. My regulars are here. Cool. It's great spending Saturday morning with y'all. Why did you park me by the barn on that old Chatham County farm? Well, I miss new paint and new shocks. Please remove my blocks. We fix the leaks and we stop the squeaks. But I can't go nowhere to go except to feel the ghost gripping my wheel. I'll chase It's great to see y'all. Uh, that was Old Derelicts, and this is a cool story. I said it was from a painting, but it was first a poem that I wrote, and some I preserved some of the original language, which was Sleep at the Crickets in Twilight, and 
the um, about the parking the barn so it was pretty cool that I started from a poem and I can show you where the poem is if you don't if you take one second so we've got the CD which uh, was my first CD and searching for paradise is my next CD which came out this September the poem is in this book heroes about capes and the CD is Searching for Paradise. Now, you can find all these great uh, items on my website, aliceosborne.com, front slash store. Check them out. You can also check out the music at Alice Osborne on my Reverb page, which is ReverbNation.com, front slash Alice Osborne. Cool stuff. And website, aliceosborne.com. No E. Back to the show. So the next song, um, anyone out there Game of Thrones fans? Now, Game of Thrones ended a whole year ago, about two weeks ago last year. We, we found out that uh, Daenerys was not the Daenerys we thought she was, although she was kind of power hungry from the beginning. She wanted the throne, and Daenerys, if you don't know Game of Thrones, she was the, the girl um, who became a woman with the beautiful white hair, and she rode dragons at the end. Now, her main knight was Sir Jorah Mormont, and he was played by Ian Glenn, and Daenerys is played by Amelia, um, oh gosh, I forgot her name, um, but yes. And she was um, amazing, and she grew as an actress throughout. I wrote this song in between about probably the second season, and it's called Sir Jorah's Song, and it's about home. And Sir Jorah was in love with Daenerys, and he finally declares his love about season four, which was six years ago, I think. And um, it didn't go so well. She was never in love with him. And the song is about finding home. And he wants to go home, but he, uh, he really wants to be with her.
Thank you all. That was Sir Joe's song. Enjoy. Hey, thanks, Susan. Yeah. And I haven't played that one in a while because um, I sort of hated um, Daenerys for being evil. And I was thinking about including that one on my Searching for Paradise, but um, because of how the show ended with Daenerys being a bad character, which is un very unfortunate for Daenerys fans. I was on the fence with her all along. I like Ser Jorah, but anyway, uh, he passed before she became evil, so that was good. And anyway, they were together when he died, so that was, that was great. Um, I mean, not great that he died, but uh, good that there was some closure. The, uh, the decision to not include that song was based on the show's ending. And uh, I had written William Eddy and included William Eddy as my 12th song on Searching for Paradise. So that's the inside scoop on why that song was not included. Yeah. Well, my next song is uh, Siege of Dairy, which is a, an old song, about five years old. And I wrote it um, five and a half years ago. And it's about my ancestor, John Barnwell, Tuscarora Jack, who is a complicated character. And he was made more complicated by his father, Matthew, whom we don't know why switched sides from being English to Irish. And we don't know why he did that in history, but he did that. And we are very fortunate that we have that information even for way back in, into, we're talking, um, we're talking the 17th century here, not the 18th, 17th century, so it goes way back. And I did some ancestral research and found John and wrote a song about him, and it's about a little bit about Charleston, which I'm going to Charleston in a month or so. I love Charleston, used to live there, and uh, South Carolina, so uh, enjoy. Put away the carelessness of 
so much. That was the Siege of Derry. And for those who know me and um, are fellow geeks like myself, I love to put real words spoken by real people in my songs. So the song has uh, more layers and more meaning. And I've done that with my Donner Party women's songs. And for this song, I put Death Before Dishonor, and that's the actual motto of the Barnwell family. So that's uh, something, a little Easter egg I put in there for you history buffs. Okay, um, home, songs about home, from home. That's where we are. And we have, uh, our next song is about Theodosia Burr um, going to history in 1804, I believe. And, uh, no, that's wrong, 1813, sorry, 1804. I'm going back to when Alexander Hamilton was murdered by his frenemy Aaron Burr in Weehawken, New Jersey. Uh, well, um, as a result of that, Aaron Burr was exiled, and he was on the run. Well, first he ran, uh, took a drink of whiskey, then he ran, a smart man, and he uh, established himself later in exile in England. Well, in 1812, he came back to New York, and his daughter Theodosia, who had since married the governor of, um, of South Carolina, or back to South Carolina, uh, Governor Alston, he... Uh, said, he wrote a letter uh, allowing her to um, be on a ship to see her father because he loved her very much. Uh, their son had just died, and he knew it was important for Theodosia to go see her father. Uh, she was on her way to see her father, and then she was captured and killed by pirates right off the coast of North Carolina. And the song is about um, her defiance and her love for her father, which some people, including Alexander Hamilton, might say was terribly inappropriate. Let's hear the song. Thank you. 
you. That was supplication, also inspired by a painting. And uh, I'm really Nancy Smith painted Nancy L. Smith painted supplication, and that was a painting that I found verse during uh, Vision and Voice when I was searching for a painting to inspire a song, and that is Mariah uh, Wheeler's shop in downtown Pittsburgh. So that was uh, that was another painting song inspiration duo. Thank you so much for that. So the next song is not mine, and it was recorded by the late, great Buck Owens, and it was penned by Homer Joy. It was also penned, uh, not penned, but uh, revitalized by the great Dwight Yoakam in a duet with Buck Owens. Hope you like. I came here looking for something I couldn't find anywhere else. I ain't trying to be nobody. Just want a chance to be myself. I've done a thousand miles of coming. I've worn blisters on my heels. Trying to find me something better. On the streets of beggars, baby. You don't know me, but you don't like me. You say you care less how I feel. How many of you? Judge me. Never walk the streets of Baker's. I spent some time in San Francisco. I spent a night there in the cave. They threw this drunk man in my jail cell. I gave fifteen dollars to that man. I also gave him my watch, and my old house key. Don't like folks thinking that I'd steal. I thanked him as I was leaving, and I headed out to Baker's Field. And you don't know me, but you don't. Like Careless how I feel. How many of you sit and judge me? Ever walk the streets of Baker's Field? How many of you sit and judge me? Ever walk the streets of Baker's Field? That's a great song. Thank you so much. Yay! Uh, the next song, let's see, is, uh, was inspired by a trip my husband and took about, uh, we took to the Midwest, uh, seven, and visiting the Ozarks in Arizona, um, that was 2011, Whew. wow, that was nine years ago, and we visited Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I had shrimp tacos, and I will never have shrimp tacos again after that experience. Mm, not so good. But anyway, Fort Smith is a very haunted um, place. Uh, prisoners were lynched. Um, the Hanging Judge was depicted in the 2010 movie with Jeff Bridges and Haley Sten Stenfield. Uh, I'm not pronouncing that right, but her first name's Haley. And she was, uh, she was a little girl in True Grit, and now she's a big girl, and she's amazing, the singer and actress and everything. But anyway, um, Jeff Bridges uh, would play Brewster Cogburg, and it was a remake of the True Grit with, with uh, Bruce, um, uh, Wayne, um, you know him. Um, and anyway, uh, just left, left it there. But we, uh, it was the Coen brothers, and we, um, we visited uh, Fort Smith, and I was inspired by the Trail of Tears um, information that was there, and I was shocked that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. 
and uh, I was very humbled by the information that the soldiers gave smallpox infected blankets to the Indians to make them die faster and infected water and of course um, it was all a plot so uh, that was that was something that uh, I wanted to put in the back of my mind and then I also uh, I've loved this short short poem by William Carlos Williams called Raph and it starts with a woman alone on the highway and she's hitchhiking and we had landed in Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to Fort Smith and I thought of, we didn't see any hitchhikers, we saw a lot of cops pulling people over but um, I was thinking that would be a long stretch of road at 100 degrees and I combined the two of the Trail of Tears and the Hitchhiker poem that was penned by William Carlos Williams and we have the song The Trail and I hope you enjoy it and it's also on my album Searching for Paradise. John Wayne, thank you. Just, I was thinking Batman. I'm like, I know it's Wayne. I'm like John Wayne. <laughs> True grit. I like um, I like watching the '68 version because then you can understand what Rooster Cogborn, um, John Wayne character, is saying because you can't understand anything from Jeff Bridges. Although Jeff Bridges is a pretty good rooster, and he still plays him today as a real person. Trying to thumb a ride out of Tulsa in June. It hurts to smile. She presses wild flowers close to her belly. She chopped off her jerky. She's headed east back to a land where people are left in fear. Shadows far behind and hands wipe a million tears. The women pray, the children cry, and then say nothing but wonder why. Stare off into the sky. 
you. That was The Trail, another Alice original. Um, if originals aren't your thing, that's cool, but today we're doing a lot of originals because all my songs apparently are about home and identity. One of my, obsession, uh, one of my obsessions. <laughs> I've written um, most of my poetry books about home and identity, and of course that carries over to a lot of my songs. Even though the songs are about other people, that's where everything that you write is coming from your sense of place and identity and your um, influence, other people influences on yourself and where you are in the world. Next song is, uh, I haven't played this one yet on my live stream show, so you're about to enjoy it. Um, and it is, it is Searching for Paradise, which was my first song about the Donner Party. It gives a whole overview of the Donner Party from Tamsin Donner, who's considered the main heroine of the Donner Party. And we're going to explore her in my novel. Um, I've done a lot of uh, outlining this week, and uh, Tamsin is gonna come back in the novel, so if you're a Tamsin fan, uh, well, you are, you're in for a treat. Uh, she is coming back, and she is, uh, we're also going to be focusing on her two daughters, Eliza and Georgia, and what they played in the life of William Eddy. So that is that's something, you just can't ignore Tamsin, she's amazing. And she was, um, if she was alive today, she would have three PhDs, uh, she'd be teaching all over, she would, be, um, you would know her on CNN. She was, she was that kind of, um, she would also be a politician, I'm sure. Uh, she was amazing. Unfortunately, she was born in 1800. Her birthday was 1800 and she died in 1847. She was 47 when she died, that makes it easy. Uh, she was born in uh, Massachusetts, um, uh, taught school in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Met her third, I'm sorry, her second husband, uh, George Donner, who um, she was his third wife and they had three children together, and she also was a stepmother for his two older kids with his first wife. And they all went to, uh, planned to go to California. They didn't have to, they, but he was seeking more land and more adventure, and she was hoping to open up a girl's seminary. And the wagon was full, to book, full of books, and she was doing homeschooling for a lot of the kids, including her own, on the trail. And she also had a journal, and the journal was lost, and that's, one of, that's going to be one of the key figures um, in my book, The Lost Journal of Tamsin Donner. Well, here's the song, and it's called Searching for Paradise. I 
gave up. You believed in me. Now your soul is mine to keep. The shiver in this garden of thorns under a blanket in that warm. Dreaming our daughters are so very safe. Fortunately, she was such a good mom. Um, her, her daughters, Georgia, Eliza, and Francis, um, all live really long lives. And in 1918, Eliza and Francis, along with Patty Reed Lewis, uh, they were old ladies at the time. Uh, remember, these girls were all born in uh, late 1830s and 18, early 1840s. And now it's 1918, June 6th. And we're at war with Europe. It's World War I. Um, they have erected the Pioneer Statue, which stands there today, which is 22 feet high, the same height as the snow that awful winter. And the three ladies are there to, are the honorees for the Donner Statue and commemorating Donner State uh, Memorial Park and State Park in Truckee, California. I was wondering where, why Georgia wasn't there, but she had died in 1911. So uh, she would have been there had she not passed, of course. But the th two sisters are there, along with Patty, and that is the subject of my song, The Snow Will Never Melt. So that was um, another historical note. All right, uh, we've got, uh, all right, a little lighter note, I think we need this. Traveling on a fried out corned beef On the hippie trailhead with zombies I meet a strange lady, she makes me nervous But she takes me in and gives me a breakfast And she says, you come from the land 
dying breath on the mountain rustles. Six foot four, full of muscle. I said to the man, you trying to tempt me. Not much to say. I said to the man, You're trying to tempt me. Cause I come from the land of plenty, and you know he said, You come from the land of wonder. Where the beer is flowing and then chunder. It's not my song. That is Men at Work, the uh, great song, uh, Land Down Under. I've got a few more minutes left. Thank you all for tuning in, and it's been fun. Uh, Susan, I'm glad you appreciate my, my historical notes. I can't stop myself. You know, I just keep talking. The next, uh, the next song we've got here is, uh, oh, my Boba Fett song. So the Boba Fett song is, um, first I have to show you who Boba Fett is if you are not acquainted with Mr. Boba Fett. Handsome. He's so handsome. He's so handsome. Um, you probably heard of a little show called The Mandalorian, and you've probably heard of Baby Yoda, if you even if you don't uh, like Star Wars. It's all in the zeitgeist. And we've got uh, we've got Boba Fett, who is perfectly prepared for COVID-19 and going to Food Lion and other adventures. He has his mask. He has his antenna. He has his cape. He has his gloves. He's all set. He also has his pocket knives and jetpack in case he needs to escape a situation quickly. He is amazing. Um, but he's also an alcoholic, and in this song, he's working that out. Uh, got a whole legend of Boba Fett that I wrote in Heroes Without Capes, and this song is about his uh, predicament or his illumination when he sees a Chick-fil-A mural by the bathrooms in Hickory, North Carolina. He's traveling from Asheville to Raleigh. Don't ask, just go with it, okay? Just go with it. And it's in this album, if you're curious. Huh. Got clean shirts and guns in the trunk. Not much interested in getting drunk. Got more baggage along the way with my past. Has anything to say? Keeping it steady in the right lane. Down I 44 and wide over that bridge. Let me pass it on the inside. Who's free to change the story? Thank you. 
Thank you. That was Boba Fett at the Chick-fil-A. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we'll be wrapping up our show in a few minutes, so I've got a couple more songs for you. Before I part and say adieu, uh, I will be back at live streaming at 5.30 from Special Treats. Uh, all you have to do is tune in at 5.30 from your Facebook. Uh, go to Special Treats. I will not be on my, my page here, but I will be at Special Treats, which is a beautiful, wonderful, cool cho chocolate shop. And the... Uh, oh gosh, town, I just forgot the uh, Timberland, Timberland, uh, Timberline um, Shopping Center in Chapel Hill, which is uh, right off uh, Martin Luther Jr. Boulevard. And it's not too far from Flyleaf Books, and um, it's a wonderful place. And there's an Orange Theory there, and there's a subway shop, so it's, it's wonderful. And I'll be there at 5.30, broadcasting live from Special Treats on location. Pretty excited, traveling again, woohoo! Okay, um, this is one of my favorite songs, Trains I've Missed by the great Walt Wilkins. Have a sip of water. It is water. Not anything stronger, I swear. Yeah. 
Here's to this place I found Love I've known Earth and sky Right here that I call home Here's to the place Things that I believe now Bigger than me And the moments that I find myself Right where I want to be Thank you all so much. It's been great 
great with you and been great um, hanging with you. I've got one more song and to close it out and uh, we'll see you next week, okay? Virtual Chip Jar, Alice Osborne 1, uh, PayPal, uh, you know, it's all up there. Um, here it is again in a fluent way. Uh, PayPal.me, front slash Alice Osborne 1, and then Venmo is Alice-Osborne-4 and it'll be right there on my page. And if you missed it, I'll run this show again on my Facebook page. So you all have a great day, enjoy it, uh, put some sunscreen on if you walk outside and uh, it's just great seeing you. Okay, <laughs> see you later. Uh, it's my last song, Quit in Time by Mary Chapin Carpenter. the show and if uh, there's going to be a replay right after I finish up but it's noon and y'all come back uh, at 11 o'clock next week which is the 13th of June I believe it is the 13th of June it definitely is and I will be broadcasting at 5 30 tonight and we will um, I'll do a, a different variety of songs today I did songs from home about home which happen to be a lot of Alice originals and if you like that, I hope you enjoyed it. If not, um, there will be more covers next week. That's how it is. Uh, see y'all later. And these are my new glasses. Still getting used to them. All right. And my new guitar strap, too. And my new guitar. So it's cool. All right. See y'all later. Bye.